का बोर अफ्रीकन दाना ओपा अफ्रीका इन फॉर अफ्रीकन टुडे द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ लिबिया अनाउंस द डेथ ऑफ मोहम्मद कदाफी लिबिया a country in North Africa bordered by the Mediterranean Sea, Tunisia, Algeria, Niger, Sudan, Chad, and Egypt, has seen numerous changes and reforms over the years. It is the fourth largest country in Africa and the 16th largest in the world by land area. Libya's rich history spans from prehistoric rock art to modern-day oil extraction, highlighting its cultural and economic evolution. Interestingly, over 90% of Libya is desert, primarily covered by the Sahara, the largest and hottest desert globally. The country also holds the largest oil reserves in Africa and the ninth largest in the world. While this video isn't focused on these facts, it's important to have this background to better understand what we're about to explore. Today, we're discussing the achievements of Libya's former leader, Muammar Gaddafi. Gaddafi ruled Libya first as the revolutionary chairman of the Libyan Arab Republic from 1969 to 1977, and then as the leader of the Great Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya from 1977 until his assassination in 2011. A highly controversial figure, Gaddafi dominated Libyan politics for over four decades, significantly impacting the country's development. While many condemn Gaddafi as a dictator who violated human rights and financed terrorism, others remember him for his substantial contributions to Libya's growth. Under his rule, Libya became one of the fastest-growing economies in Africa, often referred to as the Middle East of Africa, due to its rapid economic development. It's challenging to encapsulate all of Gaddafi's achievements in Libya in one discussion, as his influence spanned multiple sectors of the economy. Before his death in 2011, Gaddafi implemented numerous policies and projects that had lasting effects on the country. One of his most ambitious projects was the Golden Dinar, a proposed African currency backed by gold, aimed at unifying and strengthening African economies. However, this plan was never realized due to opposition from Western powers. Under Gaddafi, Libya transformed from one of the poorest countries in the world in the 1950s and 60s to the wealthiest in Africa by the 1970s, with over 150 billion dollars in foreign reserves and no budget deficit. The Libyan dinar was also among the strongest currencies globally. Gaddafi's vision extended beyond Libya. He advocated for a united African currency to boost the continent's economy and reduce poverty. Education flourished during his reign, with all levels of education funded by the government. This policy significantly increased the literacy rate in Libya from 25% to about 90%. Public education was made free, and primary education was compulsory for both boys and girls. Despite the imperfections of his regime, Gaddafi's impact on Libya's human development was recognized globally. According to the UN Development Programme in 2010, Libya ranked 5th in the Arab world for human development, particularly in intellectual growth. Now, let's delve deeper into the specific achievements of Gaddafi in Libya. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on topics like these. Under Muammar Gaddafi's leadership, Libya saw significant developments that were aimed at improving the quality of life for its citizens. For instance, electricity was made free for all Libyans, which greatly reduced the cost of living. Gaddafi also launched an ambitious irrigation project known as the Great Man-Made River, designed to bring water to every home in the country. This project, which began on August 28, 1984, involved a vast network of pipelines that transported water from the Nubian sandstone aquifer system in southern Libya to northern cities like Tripoli and Benghazi. Covering a distance of approximately 1,600 kilometers, this system provided 70% of the fresh water used in Libya, a country that had always struggled with severe water shortages due to its desert landscape. The project was so monumental that it was often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. Moreover, 
Gaddafi's government provided free seeds, land, and livestock to any citizen interested in farming, demonstrating his commitment to agriculture and food security. Housing was considered a basic human right, and laws were established to prevent renting, ensuring that every Libyan had access to a home. Gaddafi himself pledged not to secure a house for his own parents until every Libyan had one, underscoring his commitment to combating homelessness. Gaddafi's Green Book, first published in 1975, served as his ideological guide, outlining his political philosophy. His leadership saw numerous social welfare policies, including financial support for new mothers, who received $5,000 upon the birth of a child. Additionally, petrol prices were among the lowest in the world, costing just $0.14 per litre. In line with Islamic principles under Sharia law, no interest was charged on loans, and the prices of basic commodities were kept very low, ensuring that no one went hungry. The government also subsidized up to 50% of the cost of purchasing a car and provided unemployment benefits to graduates until they found employment. Gaddafi's regime was heavily reliant on Libya's oil wealth. After coming to power in 1969, his government utilized oil revenues to fund redistributive measures and promote economic and social development. A key strategy was the nationalization of Western oil companies, including British Petroleum, and the creation of the National Oil Corporation, reflecting a shift toward a more socialist economic model. Gaddafi faced significant challenges in unifying Libya's diverse tribal landscape, which consisted of approximately 140 tribes with varied traditions and origins. Despite these challenges, he managed to maintain a semblance of unity. Internationally, Gaddafi strengthened ties with neighboring countries such as Egypt, Morocco, Syria, Tunisia, and Chad, as well as maintaining relationships with France and Russia. He was also a proponent of pan-Arabism and sought to forge closer ties with other Arab nations to collectively resist Western policies in the Middle East and Africa. In summary, Gaddafi's rule brought about significant changes in Libya, focusing on social welfare and economic independence. Despite his controversial leadership, many of his policies aimed at creating a more equitable society, ensuring access to basic needs, and promoting national sovereignty. Gaddafi also established connections between Libya and Latin American countries, such as Venezuela and Cuba, which allowed him to build a broad network of international contacts. This growing influence was viewed with discomfort by both Europe and the United States. By the time of Gaddafi's death, Libya boasted the highest GDP per capita and life expectancy in Africa. The percentage of people living below the poverty line in Libya was even lower than in the Netherlands. Many of Gaddafi's supporters continue to praise his administration for creating a society with minimal class divisions by promoting domestic freedoms. His regime significantly reduced homelessness, ensured widespread access to food and clean drinking water, and made considerable strides in education. Supporters also commend his healthcare initiatives, highlighting the universal free healthcare provided under his leadership. Diseases like cholera and typhoid were contained, and overall life expectancy improved. During Gaddafi's leadership, Libya underwent several name changes. From 1969 to 1977, it was known as the Libyan Arab Republic. In 1977, the name was changed to the Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya. After the US bombing in 1986, it became the Great Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya. Gaddafi coined the term Jamahiriya, meaning the state of the masses. Throughout his 42-year rule, Gaddafi faced numerous opposition and coup attempts from both military forces and the general population. He managed these threats by maintaining a careful balance of power among the various factions in the country, while also resorting to brutal suppression to quell dissent. Libya under Gaddafi was not as dire as it has often been portrayed. His tenure saw the implementation of ambitious social programs in education, 
healthcare, housing, and public works, which you have seen in this video. These policies led to significant improvements in the living conditions of Libyans, transforming the country from one of the poorest in Africa in 1969 to the continent's leader in the Human Development Index by 2011. Now that you have watched this video, how do you compare Libya during Muammar Gaddafi's rule with present-day Libya under Mohammed Yunus al-Menfi? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.